and welcome to another edition of RCW Spotlight. I am your host, your role model, Rick Lieb, the former two-time world heavyweight champion. How many, in th RCW. How many times? How many times? Uh, Ooh. So annoying. And with me, as always, he is the manager of the current heavyweight champion, light heavyweight champion, That's two. and tag team champion. Three. Technically, is it four? Is it three or four? You guys tell us. Is it three or is it four? Or how about two twos? No. No. How about you stop with the two twos? You have weirdo? What are you wearing a tutu? Got, yes, he is. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, so, so, Ken, how are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm okay. You cut yourself shaving, I see. You want to see the other guy? <laughs> uh, really? Ser no, seriously. Oh. Last week I had surgery uh, and uh, it was... A biopsy surgery, and I have lymphoma. I don't know that much more about it. I will find out later this week what I have to do. Okay, so we are allowed to ask for prayers then, right? Prayers, rosary bead, Hail Mary, whole, 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 the whole damn thing. I got the whole thing. Okay. The whole shebang. <laughs> All right. All right, well, we will definitely be praying for, you know, my tag team partner here on Spotlight, but uh, I'm changing the subject. We don't do gloom. Studio Wrestling Shirt from Channel 11. I'm loving it. That's it. That's it. I'm I'm loving it. My now. uncle was the floor manager. I know he was. Yeah. I know he was. Where's your drink at? This is going to be my drink tonight. Okay, that's what we're trying to name. Yeah, and, and who? No. Let me ask you. Uh -huh. Who sent this? Oh, that was uh, Dakota from Tunnel Beach. Dakota Testa. From Tunnel he the best. He the best. He, he's so, no doubt. we're going to go All ahead. Right. Now, before we do that, I'm, I'm having some fireball because I had just found out the news about... Uh, my good friend for Ken's real neck and uh, real reason for the, the arm didn't do too much better curl. either. Right oh, I thought that was just from curling. You probably yeah, popped yeah, a yeah, blood vessel yeah, or something. something popped. Yeah. All right, there we go. So uh, first of all, all right. I'm going to try that in a minute. But salute. I'll tell you what I think. Yeah, give me a heads up on this. Good. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, we'll give you a double. Okay, so Mike's Hard Strawberry Lemonade. Now, I've had Mike's Hard Lemonade. I've never had this before. Different. So, Good. we're going to give it a shot. Oh, gosh. I don't taste any alcohol in that at all. That can get you in trouble. A little bit, a little bit. Absolutely. A little bit, a lot. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and take a commercial break right now. But when we come back, we're going to talk about what might be in store for us this summer for Rubber City Wrestling. See you in two minutes and two seconds. Artistic Butterfly is a locally owned shop made up of all handmade crafts and gifts. We have over 30 vendors that hand make their own unique items. Our products are constantly changing. We also provide fun crafts for adult eyes only in our newly opened third room, as well as homemade candies and baked goods. And let's not forget a few drawings by your role model, Rick Lee. Artistic Butterfly LLC is community based. We do fundraisers for kids with cancer and we also collect non-perishable items for anyone in need. Come see us today at 498 Canton Road, Akron, Ohio 44312 or call us at 234-334-4656. Artistic Butterfly LLC, allowing local artists to spread their wings. Do you need something hauled away? Are you looking to scrap that old washer and dryer? Whether you're moving, doing some spring cleaning, or just need something taken away, Fuller's Cleanout is the way to go. Contact them by phone at 234-716-9651 or on Twitter at FCO the way to go. If the stuff has to go, call FCO. CW Spotlight. Did you say that? I just, yeah, I did. Oh. I, I, I hate both of you. I am so... Listen, 
I don't understand what the big two thing is all about. It's the dumbest thing. You know it's corny. You know it's corny. Oh, I didn't say it wasn't. And yet you're going to eat. Now, uh, for those that don't understand, for the past few weeks, Andrew has been doing this countdown where he says, five, four, three, two. And it annoys the crap out of me. All right? It does. Because I don't like that. But do uh, you think they like it? Because you don't like it. That's why they like it. That's stupid. Get your thumb out of the way. <laughs> I got a thumbs up on that one. Yeah, you got a thumbs down on that one. Hmm. You're bringing me to drinking. Good stuff to anyway, come from Talmadge. Right. <laughs> he, he just wants to get his drunk. I don't know what the agenda is. He's trying to get some free tickets or something. All right, check it out. <clears throat> this summer... RCW planned on taking the entire summer off. I mean, you know it, I know it, we all know it. We're like, yeah, let's take the summer off. I got a call from a good friend, uh, Jeremy Cottle, who, who owns um, OCW, by the way. Uh, now, it's not a competing company, it's just another company of, in, in Northeast Ohio. And Jeremy's like, look, we got some open dates. We think that your guys might, you know, you might want to do. And he would love to have us over there, basically to show us that, hey, you know, He's not competing. I, I know that a lot of his wrestlers don't care for us, but it's not about his wrestlers. It's about me and Jeremy. We both do the promoting. You know, Tony T owns the company, but I do the promoting for it. I'm the one that goes out and finds the places that do it. So I thought we, you know, went over there, had a nice discussion with him, and we're gonna uh, we're looking at you trying to get me drunker. Oh yeah. All right, we're looking at... You should see the other guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was a good one, by the way. <clears throat> the um, We're going to do... We're, we're looking at doing three events this summer, um, possibly just two, depending on how soon I get the dates. Um, I'd like to do a show in June, or an event in June, which would combine... Well, I'll explain it in a minute. I'd like to do a show in June, but we're not sure. But anyway... Jeremy owns Melanie Lake, a.k.a. Kim Tam Park. Um, Melanie Lake at Kim Tam Park or something like that. I don't know. Melanie Springs. Is I've, I've heard of it. Okay. And while we're there, you know, the, the, the objective is everybody comes in to come to go swimming because it's, it's a beautiful pond. And it's got, I mean, it goes as deep as 16 feet and as shallow as, well, shallow, I mean, it, you know, nothing. So, <laughs> but it, it, it's a beautiful beach. It's a beautiful park. There's actually a, a little creek that runs through it. Um, is it creek or crick? Now, when I, my Pennsylvania side, they, they say crick. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a crick. Yeah. There's a little crick to run. There, there, there's that there crick in the back, right? Yeah. So, there's a... But, no, he's up, but he's here, a crick without a paddle. Right. Okay. Yeah. But here it's creek. Yeah, that's right. Now... We're only one state apart. Sometimes it takes 10 miles to change. Uh, it, you know, you're probably right on that. So, here's the thing. Anyway, so, I mean, but, you know, there's that. I, I know as a kid, uh, out in Pennsylvania, they had Dumans uh, Dam out there, and we would go there, and I would find crayfish and stuff in there. Yeah. And that's another thing. Is it crayfish or crawfish here? No, up, I always up, say crayfish. Yeah, up, up north it's crayfish, down south it's crawfish. Right. But regardless, it's the same thing. We used to catch them all the time out there in the uh, creek. <laughs> they do them in Lake in, in uh, Pennsylvania. Now, um, I wonder if they have them here. Because uh, that might be a euphoric thing. I'll go down there and start finding them. Now, I know they have them in Portage Lakes because I've caught them a bunch of times there. But I mean, over here in, uh, in um, Mel you know, Melanie Lake and Melanie Springs. Lake. Yeah. So, yeah. I might have to check that out. Check it out. I'll be like a little kid down there pew, 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 getting pinched before a match. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah, so, so the idea is to have have everybody come out, enjoy some swimming and some just hanging out, and then at night, or not nighttime, because we're going to do it during the day, so we have the sunlight to burn us. <laughs> but uh, we do some wrestling. Now, Three of the dates, I say this, it's going to be two Sundays or one Sunday, depending on if we get a, ju a June date quick enough. But one Sunday 
and a Thursday. Now, unfortunately, one of the Sundays is going to fall on the, I believe, July 23rd. Now, that being said, I know that that's also, they're doing um, that dropkick diabetes, which I am not telling any of our fans to not show up to if they're in that area. It's a great know, cause. It's a good cause. It's a good cause. You know, and I would, you know, I'm never going to tell one of our fans, don't go to that. Matter of fact, I'm here to tell you, hey, if you're in that area, go to it. But if you're in the other area, go to this, you know, and no harm, no foul. Because uh, it's looking like it's going to be on that day. And with ours, it's going to be, I believe it's going to start at like 3.30. I'm not, this is afternoon. See, they, this, it's still so new. This is how new it is. We don't even know. But 3.30 in the afternoon, and it should be fun. A Thursday and a Sunday. A, no, it's going to be a Thursday and a Sunday for sure in July. Mm -hmm. Now, July, the one date that I definitely know is the Thursday. This is biker night. It's a different kind of crowd. Okay. Because there are going to be a bunch of bikers there. That's July. Uh, July what? That'll be July 6th. Or July... Yeah, 6th. 6th. July 6th. And the main event on that card have I, uh, that I've been informed of... I don't know how this happened and why this got me put into it, mm -hmm. but I, I, I don't know who I angered. Who'd you anger? I don't know, because now they got me in a dog collar chain match against Danny England. Now he's mad at you. Yeah, I don't even know what I did just because we beat him up, beat up the, his friends in the Misfits. He ain't even a member of the Misfits. He just had to join in. Maybe if he didn't join in, you know? But since I beat up the, his buddy, J.L. Watson, now he's got to come after me. So there's that. You always got that. Yeah. You know, there's that, that is. Yeah. And then the other thing, there's this, that, and the other. Now this the we don't thing. know about. The other thing that. isn't that. The other is, you know, that's the latter one. The one over there by the Pepsi machine. Right, exactly. Okay. Forget about it. Mm -hmm. You know. What are you guys whispering about? What? Are you going to kick the camera? Look at this. Yes. Yeah. This is why we can't film in front of a live studio audience. I have ADHD. This is why we can't have nice things. I know, right? Now, anyway. <laughs> now, the other. The other. The July 23rd. Yeah. I don't know if they've signed the contract yet. Right. But what they're looking to have. And this one here, I'm actually looking for. I want to just fanboy this one. Fanboy. Exactly. <laughs> Okay. RCW World Heavyweight Champion, okay, Cody Reaper, okay, defends his belt against the RCW Global Television Champion George Davis. George, okay, that's the prodigal son, my friend. What do you think about that? Because I know you're not a, I, you don't hate George Davis. I don't hate him. You don't hate me. Don't, I don't think. I don't hate you either. Don't mean you're all gonna win. No, I don't hate you. Well, but but George Davis, I mean, he was too mean for the Broncos. Yeah. What do you not think? too mean. Not too mean for Team Beast. No. <laughs> you think your boy's gonna be able to walk out of that one, champion stuff? Probably. Probably. I Probably. like how you don't give it too much up. Probably. Yeah. There's a lot. Of, it, it's funny how I give him a seventy-six point three percent. Cody chance. Reaper. I'm telling you right now, the way wouldn't treat you with a probably. I would have said. Absolutely. Yeah, he'd fill your head full of bull crap, and you you go you you, boom, boom, boom. I would have told yeah, you right. exactly what you wanted to hear. No. Which is the truth. The difference is you tell him what he wants to hear. I tell him what he needs to hear. Two different things. Not not one different thing. Alexander. But you but, would have said definitely for Alexander Crowley. How many different things? Two different things. You're annoying. So in the Andrew that, likes it. Now listen, on the sixth, Andrew does like it. Uh, so does yeah. Mikey. He likes it. Yeah, so does Andrew. Anyway, on the 6th. The 6th. I'm about to back and forth. You like that? 6th of July. Now, the biker show. Right. Biker night. I also heard Alejandro Crowley. The bikers will love him. Maybe in a tables match. Tables. Tables. I think it's going to be fun to watch Alejandro Crowley get thrown through a table. But he'll get up and beat whoever's ass is. No in question here. <coughs> because it might No, be. no, very true. No, because it might be. It, see, I'm hearing all these rumors. One time I hear it's going to be against, you know, possibly Joe Zook. Then I'm also hearing it's going to possibly be against 
uh, Brandon Miller again. And then I'm hearing that it's possibly going to be against both of them at the same time. That means he doesn't even have to lose to lose that belt. No, that's true. I love that. I don't like that stipulation thing, though. It's, uh, no, 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 of course you wouldn't. No, it's who not would? Your favor. Who it's not would? your favor. You like it? You don't like it. Do I like it or don't like it? You do not like that. Yeah. You can't like that. I do like that. There's no way you like that. I wouldn't like it if it was me. Of course. But it's Crowley, so I love it. Nah. He's he's a very good champion. And now there's a chance to have that taken from him. And the bikers are going to eat it up and they love him. They go, boom, boom, boom. The bikers are going to love Joe Zuck. Nah. Yeah, he's nah. a Marine. Nah, he looks like a uh, Amish rabbi or something. I don't know. In fact, the bikers might like all of them guys. Probably. You know, because you got yourself the biggest hillbilly in professional wrestling since Hillbilly Jim <laughs> dawned out WWE. No, he's more of a hillbilly, hillbilly Jim. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he definitely really. is in real life, you know, because that's, he's actually not a character. It's his real life. Thing. He it's eats stuff that Hillbilly Jim ran over, okay? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. With his feet. Let that sink in. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so I'm looking forward to this summer. I don't know about you. But hopefully we get all the dates. And then hopefully by next week, we have all the dates in stone. Right now, July 6th, Biker Night. That's on a Thursday. So if you could take Thursday nights off, be there. The only tickets that we are going to be selling are the 40 front row seats. And 40? Yeah, because you got to buy the pass to get in. But the front row seats will be an additional Okay. Probably five or ten bucks. I don't think it's gonna be that much. So it'll be an additional on top of the whatever it is, twenty twenty five to get in to the entire park. I don't know what that costs. There either. you go. I'm just giving guesses. So make sure you got some money. And then um after that, I think that, you know, we'll be golden, pony boy. All right. Pony boy. Yeah. You know, from outsiders. Yeah. It's probably way after your time. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and take Everything's a commercial after break. My time. <laughs> but when we come back we're going to take your questions. Do you enjoy indie flicks and B-movies? Maybe have a script in mind and want to be showcased? Well, the same company that gave you Footsteps and Night Z, Guru Films, is looking for more ideas. Contact us at thegurufilms1 at gmail.com or through the Guru Films Facebook page. So be sure to follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash guru films dot 420 to purchase dvds and for updates on new films coming soon are you looking for a job i mean seriously do you want a job then get a hold of asap staffing ASAP Staffing is located in Barberton, Ohio, 165 2nd Street, Northwest. Phone number is 330-615-2477. Would you like to see your commercial aired on both RCW Spotlight and RCW Global? Contact us on social media at facebook.com slash Rubber City Wrestling, Instagram at Rubber City Wrestling, or email us at the RCW Network at gmail.com. Welcome back to RCW Spotlight. Well, fans, it's that time of the show again. You've got questions? We got answers. Now, if you'd like for us to answer your questions right here on the air, feel free to write us at twitter.com forward slash wrestling rubber. Ken, what do we got? All right, here, here's one. When is RCW going to have more cage matches from Nico... Titty, Teddy, like what California? I like Miko titties, yeah. Miko titties, we go for the titties. Yeah, exactly. right. Miko for them too. <laughs> I'm gonna lie. And it is. Okay. I think October talking? would be brilliant. Of course, that's when we're gonna do it. It's uh, October's when we at least are shooting for the uh, cage matches. I know that. I mean, because they want to do the Yeti Bunkhouse uh, annually. And so, you can't do a Yeti Bunkhouse bra without it being in a steel cage. So, it has to be in October. So, 
fingers crossed we keep this going. I like it. Yeah. I like those cage matches. Yeah, I want to go see it. Except for the fact that they locked my cage. Because I beat the stuff out of Die Hard. I don't care what anybody says. I beat him from pillar to pulp. And then I got froze. Because I'm afraid of heights. Afraid well, of planes. You think he knew that? Yeah, I he got you where he needed you. I know he knew that. Boom, yeah, it was cheating. Boom, boom. Okay. It was cheating, 100%. There's no cheating in cage matches. Yes, there is. When you lock the door on no, me. No, the only thing was in that cage match. You were crying. There's no crying in cage matches. It wasn't crying. That was yeah. sweat. Oh, we just came here and no, here only. beating down. Beating. <laughs> What's the next question? All uh, right, yeah. Notice how we change them up real quick here. That's because we got a time limit. Most violent match you've ever been involved in from our good friend Dakota from Talmadge. <laughs> this dude loves this show. I had a violent match with Chopper Davidson. Tell me about it. It was at a, it was at a uh, VFW hall and I came prepared. I knew the building. I knew what was there. I knew what was there. I knew what was over there. I even had a quarter taped to my boot. And the reason I say that was electrical tape. So you couldn't tell. It was just black on black. Crime? Yeah, go on. Black on black crime. We go, we're outside the ring. We go to the back of the hall. There's a Pepsi machine. Yeah. 25 cents. Do you, do you get it yet? Yeah, it was a long time ago. So, right. <laughs> so I get him all the way down there. I run his head into the Pepsi machine. Grab the quarter off my boot. I slip the quarter in the slot. I take his head, bang it right into Mellow Yellow. Out That's comes right the can of Mellow up. Yellow. Hey, you want some pop? Pop! Boom, bang him there. And you popped him. I popped him good. And then he picks up a cookie sheet. And he's going to hit me with it. Not only does he hit me with it, he sprays Pam on it. The non stick stuff, right? Boom. Then the match ended up where he went to hit me with a chair. I'm sorry, wait, wait, time out. Stop. Go ahead. What do you need? You're from Sicily. What did you need the pan for? You already got the greasy head. Well, I didn't have Pompero Furpo's uh, secret blend oh, okay, okay, of, okay. Of, of oil and vinegar. All right, so, so I used that, the pan from the, over there at the Giant Eagle. Mm -hmm. So then he hits me with the cookie sheet. Then he comes after me with a chair and I duck it. The chair bounces off the rope, hits him in the head. He goes down, sitting in the corner like this. Oh, God. There was only one more thing I could do. One more thing. Is there a bowling ball in the room? I go get the bowling ball out from under the ring. Boom. 7-10 split. He got up staggering. I finished him off, and we went home, Bruce. And that was that. Man, I've been in so many violent matches. It's yeah, it did. Yeah. I mean, from multiple steel cage matches, which are always violent. Yeah. Um, that role model invitational when Cactus Sack brought out the barbed wire bat. The that role was model invitation. I wish I would have been there. I know that would have been awesome. Did you ever punch someone and your finger goes in their mouth and they clamp down on it? No. That's terrible. I bet it is. That's really terrible. Yeah. I, I don't. Poke him in the eye. Let him let go. I bet. Yeah. Um, when I I wrestled a bunch of no DQ matches and they were all violent, a lot of lot of stuff. But I think the most violent match I've ever been in. And it's weird for me to bring it up like this, knowing that I'm going to have to do one again. My dog collar chain match with Carnage. Carnage. Okay. Well, well, first of all, I don't like him. He don't like me. You still don't like him. No, hell no. I've never changed. No, he can rot in hell for all I care. We uh, That's harsh. Uh, is it? Yeah, a little bit. All right, well, we're tough. Harsh. Tough, uh, what's his name? Nico Diddy said the kitty. <laughs> but the milk was still good. Nico Diddy from Lakewood, <laughs> California. Yeah, so listen. No, this is Dakota from Talmadge. Okay, this one's Dakota. All right, listen. But yeah, so the... Uh, that match there, let's just say, when we wrapped the chain around each other's fists, yeah, we really punched each other in the head because it was a shoot, and we didn't care that it was a shoot, and it ended up having to have the entire locker room break us apart at the end. And when it, when it was over, did you say you should have seen the other guy? Oh yeah, 
Okay. Oh, yeah, because you should have seen the other guy. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, that, that match got nowhere fast. Um, yeah, so that would have to be my right. first. All right, my now, first. our final question of the day. Last one! When does August Artois <coughs> come back to RCW? From Mark Butzer? Mark Buster? <laughs> Mark Buster. From Streetsboro, Ohio. Weird name. Um, I'm going to guess that this is a relative of Argus Artois. We have actually, according to Tony T, been talking to him about wrestling your boy. Which boy? Alejandro Crowley. Uh, but that, that that is if your boy still holds the belt after... Because, I, because they want to bring in August, hopefully... In yeah. August. August come in August, he come back in September. He'd yeah, he hasn't wrestled in since in RCW since uh, what 2019. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, it's been a long time since he's been. Yeah, here. I know. So I, I mean, we're hoping to get him back. I don't know if it's a, I don't know if it's 100 percent in stone, but you know they're hoping to get him back at least to do like one or two shows a, a matches a year. So that's it. All right, Ken. Good show. Hopefully you get better, man. Hopefully they knock. I'm working on. I'm going to beat this sob. Right. I ain't dying on this hill. No, and definitely ain't dying behind the counter there because that wouldn't be right. Oh, it would be kind of poetic, but no. I mean, now you got to die in the ring or in your wife. <laughs> I said that a lot. I'm going to tell her you said. That. Uh, I think she's watching. <laughs> anyway, for the Sicilian Beast, Ken Sermonera, I am your role model, Rick Leap. Say, join us again next week for another edition of RCW. Bye-bye, bye. bye, bye.